Hi, my name is Phil Janke, and this is the Individual Rights versus Public Domain podcast. In Section 106A of the U.S. Copyright Law, it states that the author of a visual art shall have the right to claim authorship of that work and to prevent the use of his or her name as the author of any work of visual art which he or she did not create. Every author has exclusive rights to their work. This means that the author has the right to reproduce the work, perform the work publicly, display the work publicly, make derivatives of the work, and to dispute copies of the work. Facts and theories are not protected. This is true regardless of the fact that there was considerable time and effort spent in accumulating information for the compilation. Also, once sold, the buyer may display the work publicly. Another right in copywriting is that copyright law does not protect ideas, only the tangible expression of ideas. The author can grant others the right to use their work as well. Using an author's work without permission is infringement, and if it is federally registered, the author has the right to sue the unlicensed user. A copyright usually lasts the life of the author plus 70 years until it is put in the public domain. Since songs like Wolfgang Amadeus Mozart's classic Requiem in D minor were created before 1923, there is no copyright protection and it resides in the public domain. There is no need to purchase any licensing in order to play, record, or distribute sheet music for this song. Michelangelo's The Creation of Adam is another example of a work that is not protected by copyright law. Without the protection of copyright, this art piece has been placed in the media and become a staple in the fine arts of the world. It is possible for myself to show pictures of this painting, for others to have rendered versions, and be able to be displayed in books and magazines. If this timeless artwork had been protected by copyright laws, fine art and painting may have never been as expressive or available for us. Come to think of it, what classic art pieces would be accessible? It is fortunate that we have so many amazing works at our fingertips due to public domain. But there are a few works, however, where it is imperative to have a copyright. It is because of these copyrights that we can enjoy films, music, and other types of media. The Texas Chainsaw Massacre is a copyrighted movie originally released in 1974. Since the release of the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre in 2004, New Line Cinema has now purchased rights to the movie. Without protection from a copyright law, this movie poster and the movie could be altered and replicated to the extent that it tarnishes the integrity of the story, hence ruining the initial plot in its entirety. Maintaining copyright protection, this poster may be used as only a New Line Cinema artifact. The album Hemispheres by the rock band Rush is another example of a work that is protected by copyright. Without the protection from copyright laws, these beloved songs would be altered to sound completely different from the original. This could possibly ruin the band and all the work that they had done to put out this album. Lots of money goes into recording and releasing an album, so making sure that these songs are protected is a very serious matter. It is the band's decision whether or not they would like to sell a song under copyright law. This gives the buyer the right to alter the song, but for a price. As you can tell, copyright laws are there to protect the hard work of artists who make a living off of creating new ideas or works. It is hard to say that there are not some good and bad sides to these laws, but yet they still serve their same purpose of protecting what is ours. My name is Phil Janke, and thank you for listening to my podcast of Individual Right versus Public Domain.